Hi, and welcome back to Programming with Pax. In today's video, we're going to go over CSS box model. We'll cover what it is, how it works, and also some quirks to be aware of when there are multiple elements next to each other. Let's get started. All right, so think of every single element on a website. So that's your text, your images, divs, buttons, everything. Think of them as rectangular boxes. They start with the content, followed by the padding, the border, and then the margin. So padding is within the border, and margin is outside of the border. By default, the padding, border, and margin are all going to be set to zero pixels. So you're not going to see them. However, they are, of course, always there, and they can be changed. Let's see how that works with code. All right, so I have my dev server going and a very simple project. I've got a div with an ID of box one and a wrapper around that, a wrapper div, uh, just for a future example that I'm going to show you in a couple minutes. For the styling, I have just reset the margin, turned up the font size to make it easier for you to see, and given the box a color. So as is, you can see that the content of the box is actually going to be this entire pink colored box. So this is the content. Now, as a developer, you're going to be using Chrome's inspect tool or your browser's inspect tool quite often. So to do that, you're going to right click on whatever element on the page you want to see, and you're going to hit inspect. This is going to bring up the elements panel. And from there, we can hover over and see that the content is this blue section here. And at the top, it gets highlighted in blue as well. Now let's see what happens when I add some padding. So we can see here that the 30 padding is added all the way around the box. Because there is padding now, it's actually going to push the content inwards and the padding will be around it. Now for a border, you can see now that the content is still in the middle. Then there's padding just outside of it, followed by the border, the 30 pixel border. And finally, margin. Let's add 30 pixels of margin. And you can see that everything is pushed in even further. Notice that the margin space is all transparent and the padding is going to take the background color that's set on the content. And again, in Chrome, you can see we've got the content, then the padding, border, and finally the margin. All right, so when would you use padding versus margin? Well, because margin is applied to the outside of your element, this affects how far your element is going to be away from other elements. So it's often going to be used to push one element away from another element. Padding, on the other hand, is applied to the inside of your element, hence affecting how far your element's content is away from the border. You'll often see responsive buttons utilizing pattern so that whether the text of the button says click or click me now, the overall size of the button is going to grow with it. I've made a second box now and applied a margin of 40 around it. I want to quickly show you a quirk to keep in mind when you're dealing with multiple elements. And that is that the vertical margin of two elements does not get added together. So you may think that the 30 margin and the 40 margin get added together. But in actual fact, if we hover over box two, you can see that the overall margin is actually only 40, the gap between here. So it's not 70. When there are two elements vertically stacked on top of each other, it's going to take the higher margin of the two elements and apply that. This is called collapsing margins. It's important to note that it does not happen on horizontal margins. So when they're side by side, left and right, and only when it's vertical. So top and bottom margins. There are exceptions to this, of course. So flex and grid containers will establish a flex and grid formatting context for their children. This will then give them different behavior to block layouts. And one of those differences is that the margins do not collapse. I said before that I had a wrapper around for an example, and this is what it's for. So if I add display flex to the container and I save, now you can see that the box two actually jumps away just a little bit. And if we hover over, we can see that the 30 pixels from box one and the 40 pixels from box two are not collapsing. Instead, they are actually being added together for 70 pixels total. It should be noted that padding does not work like this. There is no collapsing padding, just margin on the top and bottom. And that's all there is to the box model. I hope you found this video helpful. It's a simple concept, 
but super important to understand when you're styling a layout. This video is the fourth video in a series that I'm working on that's all about these core CSS topics that can sometimes be a little bit trickier, but you really need to understand them. So be sure to subscribe for more content just like this. On that note, thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.